Now let's listen one, uh, to one more member of the crew. Uh, and, and this is the, the, the member of the crew who received so much of the attention prior to liftoff because we were so concerned about security uh, given what's going on in the world and given the fact that he was a citizen of Israel, Ilan Ramon. Let's listen in. I really feel that uh, we shouldn't talk too much about it. You know that uh, NASA security people, and I know that NASA security people are doing their best for us. And since uh, September 11, uh, unfortunately, it's, it's a kind of a world issue here. And uh, since then, all the shuttle uh, flights are taken care of by uh, NASA security for the best of all of us. And I don't feel that uh, we are uh, any special uh, event for them. Well, the truth of the matter was, it was a special event. It was treated as such because of exactly who we loan Ramon is. Let's listen to James Hartsfield one more time. Houston, a public affairs officer with NASA. He's giving another update. Search and rescue teams in Dallas-Fort Worth and in portions of East Texas and other appropriate areas along Columbia's planned route have been alerted and are in contact with local law enforcement authorities in those areas. Any debris that is located in an area that may be related to the space shuttle's contingency should be avoided and may be hazardous as a result of toxic propellants used aboard the shuttle. The location of any possible debris should immediately be reported to local authorities who are in contact with NASA search teams. All right, let's, once again, that's, that is a uh, bit of a repeat, but uh, for those of you who've been listening, we are, we're sorry for the re repetition. We just don't know when he's going to add additional information, and so we're going to listen in and keep you posted as events uh, unfold here. Let's bring uh, everybody up to the date. We're approaching the top of the hour. It's 11 o'clock now, and the shuttle is approaching. We're approaching the point when uh, about two hours ago, almost exactly, uh, the Space Shuttle Columbia should have been pretty much on final approach to uh, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida at the conclusion of a 16-day science mission. Instead, uh, communication was lost. Telemetry, which is the radio signals with all the data, all the stuff that fills those computer screens in mission control was lost. And uh, the shuttle did not turn up at its appointed time, 9.16 a.m. Eastern Time at the Kennedy Space Center. Space shuttles, when they begin their descent, their landing is, you can set your watch to it. And so when that happened, immediately alarm bells went up. Should tell you that NASA has lowered flags uh, near the countdown clock at Kennedy Space Center to half staff. NASA has lowered flags to half staff at the countdown clock. Seven person crew, and what you're seeing are pictures captured. Actually, you're seeing a live picture right now. Uh, of mission control in Houston, but uh, the picture that we've been showing you um, all morning long is uh, the final moments of the space shuttle Columbia as it broke up mid-flight, 200,000 feet, traveling 12,500 miles an hour. Our affiliate WFAA capturing this dramatic videotape, which gives us a sense of what caused, uh, well, we don't know the cause, but we do know it was a breakup. The cause. All right, let's listen. We have, uh, we have been trying to get our affiliates to capture the shuttle as it came across the continental United States this morning. KOAT out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. A uh, little darker there, of course, when it came across, but I think you can see that dot there. I'll try to help you out and just tell you it's right in that spot right there in case you're having problems. Uh, not quite the, um, the shot uh, that we got, obviously, out of um, the uh, Dallas affiliate, but Bear in mind, the breakup occurred over Texas. This is New Mexico, so these would have been, uh, this is exactly what you would expect to see uh, as a space shuttle would streak across the uh, night sky on its way to its uh, landing. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Um, all right, as we look at that shot, and um, we uh, will tell you that the president was at Camp David when it happened. He's on his way back, should be there about noontime, and that's where Suzanne Malveau is. Suzanne, what do you have for us? Well, earlier today I spoke with White House spokesman Scott McClellan, who said yes, the president was notified of the situation by his chief of staff, Andy Card. They made the decision that it would be better to monitor the situation here from the White House. As you mentioned, the president is on his way back to the White House. He'll be here shortly after noon. Uh, also spoke with a senior administration official who said that there was no indication that the shuttle had any type of threat that was uh, against it or that was in any type of range of uh, anti-aircraft, uh, anti-missile uh, range. 
and that uh, there was no indication that this was uh, any type of uh, terrorist situation. Of course, they're still getting lots of information, but uh, initial indications from senior administration officials saying that it does not point in that direction. I should also tell you as well that sources tell us that the president, uh, when he comes back, is expected to make a statement, some sort of briefing, uh, that he is also expected to call Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon, as you had mentioned before, one of those on the shuttle, an Israeli citizen, that the president is all likelihood to call him later this afternoon and that we will hear from Mr. Bush when he returns. Miles. CNN, and Suzanne Malvo, we'll, obviously, uh, the minute the president gets back and makes a statement, we'll be getting back to you, so stay close, please. Um, let's go to uh, Elizabeth Cohen. Elizabeth Cohen in the newsroom here has had an opportunity to speak with um, members of uh, one of the uh, crew members' family. Uh, and we're just going to leave it at that right now. Elizabeth, uh, what can you tell us? Miles, I was speaking on the phone just a few moments ago with the brother of one of the astronauts. I'm not going to name the astronaut just to, to protect the privacy of this family. But he said that in the past two hours since the contact was lost, the families have been speaking with each other. The families of the different astronauts have been speaking with each other. They met each other at the launch. There were various activities for the family members. I am sure that they did not expect to get back in contact with one another quite in this way. This, this gentleman was saying that he expects to be summoned to a memorial service, perhaps in Houston, um, sponsored, uh, given by NASA. He expects to get that phone call soon. And um, again, the families turning to each other for support in this difficult time. Miles? Did they indicate there is a, a, a fairly um, rigorous protocol, if you will, that NASA employs, where they have people assigned to each family member? Um, to assist them through all this. Did you get any sense that that was occurring and were they getting the support they need? The, the man who I was speaking to is a brother of one of the astronauts. He said he had had no contact from NASA. Now, perhaps the, the astronaut's spouse had had contact or parents or somebody else. Perhaps this, this person hadn't, but others had. Um, he did indicate, though, that he expected and that the families expected that they would be summoned back in. Elizabeth Cohen, uh, thank you very much. Let us know if you... Um find anything else out uh, as we continue um, our coverage here. Thank you. Uh, let's take a look at a live picture which um, tells probably as much as this shot we've been showing you, Kennedy Space Center, that's in front of a place they call the Turn Basin, um, right beside the countdown clock. In the distance, launch pad 39A where the Space Shuttle Columbia launched uh, 16 days ago beautiful uh, afternoon launch, the flag at half-staff, in memory of the seven-person crew of Columbia. And um, that launch pad, uh, hard to say when that launch pad might be used again. Uh, very premature to even discuss anything along those lines, but there you see it, there you see the flag, and uh, that in many ways sums up uh, what we are talking about here. CNN's Andrea Koppel um, has been talking to um, Israeli officials, and, and we should point out that, um, in case you're just tuning in, that Ilan Ramon was a member of this crew, the first Israeli astronaut. Uh, Andrea, uh, what have you heard? Well, Miles, uh, I've spoken with the spokesman from the Israeli embassy here in Washington, and they, he tells me that they have dispatched a small team uh, down to uh, the Kennedy Space Center where Colonel Ramon's wife, uh, his four children, and we believe his parents, who were quite elderly, uh, were awaiting his arrival. Uh, the embassy itself uh, obviously had no comment. They're waiting uh, for... Uh, for the government in uh, in Jerusalem to take the lead there, uh, but having said that, you know, just looking at this picture, uh, Colonel Ramon was was so much more than than just a professional, and uh, as you pointed out, the first Israeli to go into space. But he really was somewhat of a you know a national hero, the quintessential hero, if you will, for Israel. This is a man that flew. Uh, the, uh, in Yom, the Yom Kippur War in 1973, he fought in the uh, 1982 war with Lebanon. He was also, believe it or not, uh, one of the pilots that bombed uh, the Iraqi nuclear reactor uh, back in 1981. 
Uh, he is a payload specialist who's been training for this mission since 1997. And in fact, his job on board the space shuttle was supposed to be uh, basically using cameras on board to look at how desert dust and other contaminants that you would find in the atmosphere, Earth's atmosphere, how that's affected by rainfall and uh, temperature. So this was a mission that uh, the entire Israeli public was, uh, was watching and uh, really had their, their heart in their hands. And uh, at this moment, you can imagine how many hearts across uh, Israel and uh, certainly in this country as well are breaking right now. Miles. Andrea Koppel, thank you very much. Uh Certainly that is the case uh, everywhere right now as we pause to think about those family members.